thank you. Uh, first, I'll say that uh, for me, it's also a great honor to be here uh, to make this presentation. And uh, uh, without uh, maybe repeating what has been said, I first want to mention that uh, it's really indeed a privilege to come and talk in a symposium in honor of Eric Topek. I met, first met Eric, I don't remember whether it's 1994, 1995, when uh, ARC introduced the thematic area on poverty. I'm not sure that it was even thematic area on poverty. I think it was still part of another uh, thematic area. And uh, we actually attempted to write a proposal. I can assure you that 20 years ago, we didn't even know what we were trying to write on. And if Eric was not there to encourage us, we will not be here today. Uh, 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 that time, I think the, the story of poverty, even in Africa, there was very little research on poverty. In spite of uh, Dobek having done some work, I think in the 1980s, there wasn't any research on poverty in Kenya. But uh, we were trying, I remember there was a team uh, from Kenya, there was also a team from uh, Ethiopia uh, with Abebe and others. And uh, we, we were really the, the pioneers. But what I'm saying is that what Eric has done to build capacity in Africa, it's uh, actually incredible. Researchers come from a very humble background. They have no idea. But he's been there to mentor them. And therefore, I'm really uh, on to be here as a representative of those many people that uh, he has trained. In the process, uh, Rita, uh, much later, I think towards the end of the 1990s, they started the collaborative, uh, the f there was the first collaborative project on poverty, which I happened to be a member of the team. We made a visit to Cornell because ALC had sponsored uh, the project and was being mentored by uh, David Sun uh, together with Eric and Steve Younger. Uh, after that, there were two other pro uh, collaborative projects that I took part in, again, which were being mentored by David Sun. So I had the privilege to come to Cornell actually three times on ALC supported projects. Uh, and then finally, there's the project that I'm actually presenting. I did talk about it. This was an ALC project on uh, growth poverty rings. And I was one of the, or my team was one of the uh, many teams in Africa that were working on this. We are working on the Kenyan team. So thank you, uh, Eric. Um, again, it's an honor to be here. I will talk about uh, pro poor growth inequality. Uh, in Kenya, there's really little uh, in this one on institutions, but uh, maybe I'll mention uh, something uh, about that. And uh, this paper is called that by two uh, other people, uh, Domiciano Keri and uh, Godfrey Denge from Kenya. Uh, my outline of the presentation, I'll look quickly at the introduction and motivation, the objectives of the study, methods, data, results, uh, conclusions, and some policy implications. Uh, very quickly on uh, introduction and motivation, I know some of these issues have been mentioned by Adi and uh, Patrick Fosu. Uh, what we find in Kenya is that uh, we are now uh, priding ourselves that uh, this is our jubilee year, 50 years since independence. Uh, 50 years ago, the government uh, thought about ways of fighting poverty, ignorance, and disease. But uh, we find that 50 years later, we still have not done uh, well. Uh, we are still uh, f uh, struggling with poverty uh, reduction and uh, inequality has, has already been shown here by the previous speakers. And we found that almost 50% of the population still fall below the poverty line. And still the non-monetary measures of poverty uh, also indicate that uh, poverty is still an issue at uh, recently. Uh, as we saw yesterday when uh, Sabina was presenting even uh, multidimensional poverty is still an issue in Kenya. And then in addition, there has been raw erratic economic growth. Uh, Okay, I don't, I, I, I'm not going to present figures on growth, but uh, listening to what uh, Adi was saying, you can see that uh, what has happened in Kenya is that uh, there has been growth at some time, then sometimes it falls, but 
the issue is that it has not, or even when there has been growth, it's not always been accompanied by poverty reduction. Then in terms of inequality, Kenya is uh, among the 30 most unequal countries worldwide. And um, what we fight on the ground is that there are large spatial and socioeconomic variations in education, health, and sanitation indicators. And therefore, the challenge that we have in Kenya is how do we reverse the trend of increasing poverty, uh, while at the, the, the same time adopting a pro-poor growth framework. Okay, uh, from the figures that Ade showed, it seemed like uh, one would think that uh, poverty is falling because uh, the spike there is in 1997, uh, and then uh, poverty seems to have fallen between 19, I mean, between 1997 and the current, the, the latest survey year, which is 2005-2006. But looking at what is happening on the ground and other measures of poverty. Uh, Recently, there, there, there are some results which are not yet official, but uh, there was some some attempt to estimate poverty using the small area area estimation, combining the population data for 2009 with the the, 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 the survey data for 2005-2006, and it was showing that though the geographical distribution of poverty may have changed, uh, you can't really that uh, say that up. Poverty in absolute terms has changed so much, so they still need to worry about how do we reverse that trend. So, um, really what we try to do then in this paper, uh, or, or at that time when we actually tried to, to, to do the work, was to try to see how we could disentangle uh, the, 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 the relationship between poverty, growth, and inequality, and the factors conditioning the link in Kenya. And uh, we also attempted to uh, investigate the impact impact of institutions and socioeconomic factors on the next uh, on the nexus i will maybe mention later about the challenges we had with the institutions because it's still a question of uh the problem of data which has already been mentioned so in the in 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 the part that we are going to present here because it's really a presentation drawn from the bigger study we look at uh, or we try to assess the extent to which growth in kenya has been been pro poor we also try to explore the link between uh, institutions or access to institutions, growth at inequality, and then uh, try to, to press, propose some um, policies for promoting pro poor growth in Kenya. The methods, uh, I will not go into the detailed methodology, but what we do first to analyze the, to, uh, for the first objective, that is to assess the extent to which growth has been pro poor. Uh, we uh, actually use pro poor growth indices and growth incidence curves. Uh, using the, 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 the methodology in the literature, uh, which is presented there, Ravarion and Chen, Kakwani and Pania, Kakwani, Kata and Son. Then in the second objective, that's to explore the links between uh, institutional factors, growth and inequality, we do Shapley value, uh, regression-based decomposition. Then uh, lastly, we try some panel growth regressions in order to try to link, uh, I'll st I'm still putting it in quote, institutional factors and growth. In the growth regressions, what we do, because we have three data sets here, maybe I should first talk about the data, then I come back to the, to the growth regressions. We use three survey data sets. We have welfare monitoring survey of 1994, welfare monitoring survey of 1997, and the Kenya Integrated Household Budget Survey data sets. These so far are the only representative uh, national household uh, budget survey that have data on expenditure. Uh, there's, uh, the, the next key piece is planned for 2013-2014. I think the piloting will be going on very soon. Uh, so this data is uh, corrected by the National Bureau of Statistics using a national representative uh, sample frame. And uh, we say that the data is adequate for uh, analysis with the usual caveats, especially for institutional factors, because what we are trying to do for the institutional factors was actually to get uh, other secondary data and then map and turn to, uh, to, 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 to the data. But then, of course, for us to be able to compare poverty over the three time periods, then we needed to make uh, appropriate adjustments to the expenditures uh, by actually getting ratios of poverty lines in each uh, in particular period so that uh, the income measures could be 
comparable. So then what did we do about the, the, the growth regressions, just going back uh, briefly, because we are using, um, the, 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 we, we are using household uh, revo data, but it's not panel. It's three periods, but it's not panel. So what we did is we tried to uh, uh, construct community panels. There are about 1,300 communities in each of the data sets. Uh, the, the communities, the clusters are comparable within the three periods, but the households, uh, uh, it's not really a panel. You cannot match the households. So what we try to do is uh, we try to come up with the, with, 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 with the, with the community panels, and then uh, we actually looked at the growth in mean incomes over the periods, and then uh, we, 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 we had a uh, vector of uh, explanatory uh, or exogenous factors driving uh, changes in mean income, but uh, then we introduced community and uh, community at survey fixed effects. Otherwise, the, the, the others we had ORS uh, models for 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 uh, changing uh, mean incomes and also for poverty. So. Uh, very quickly, the, the, the empirical results. Okay, I don't want to talk much about the data. I think I've mentioned for the household data, uh, we have uh, the data for each uh, time period, about between 10,000 households and 13,000 households in the three survey periods. So there's an um, analysis that is done at the household level, but there's the, some, some analysis that is done at the community level, as I've explained. So uh, the, the, our results first, the question of whether growth has been pro poor. Uh, what we find is that uh, maybe I can I, I, I can first go to, to to the results that we have here. The first table that we show here are the pro poor growth indices between 1994 and 2006. First, we give the results for 1994, 96, and 1997, 2006. And uh, on the first column there, we have our indices. So what we find here uh, is that uh, the first result we find is that uh, except for Kakwani and Pania indices, all the other EDC suggest that between 1997 and 2006, all pro uh, EDC suggest that growth was actually pro poor because you can see that uh, if we compare the mean, uh, the, the, the growth rates and the EDC, you find, uh, uh, we, we, we actually find that uh, the, 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 sorry, we don't have a pointer. If you, for instance, look at 1994, 1997, you can see that the Kakwani and Pania EDC was 0.54, uh, compare that uh, with the growth for instance, of mean income of minus 0 0.320. And uh, if you compare the 1997 2006, we have minus 1.733. Compare that with minus 0 0.025. So that you find that this one, the red ones are actually uh, less than uh, the, the 0 0.025. So that is one result. The next one, we find that uh, the are all pro poor uh, indices of poverty equivalent growth for severity of poverty relative to other measures of poverty. Actually su suggested that uh, the ultra poor benefited less proportionately from the benefits of growth in income and poverty. So it's like the very poor are actually the ones who are uh, not benefiting much, uh, suggesting that growth was not uh, uh, necessarily pro poor between 1997 and 2006. And again, you can see uh, what I've marked in purple, minus 0 0.031 and minus 0 0.0, uh, minus 0 0.022. Then the third thing that we find is that the Ravarian and Chen growth rate uh, is negative, suggesting that growth was pro-rich rather than pro-poor. So Ravarian and Chen, uh, you find that uh, in 1994-97, we had minus 0 0.062, and uh, 1997-2006, we had uh, an index, uh, a growth rate of minus 0 0.019. So here, the, the suggestion is that uh, since it's negative, it's suggesting that growth was actually pro-rich uh, rather than pro-poor, what you'd have expected. Then we also uh, constructed the growth incidence curves uh, for the 
two different time periods. First, we have 1997 and 2006, and then we have 1994 and uh, 1997. First, we find that uh, between 1997 and uh, 2006, uh, the, the, the suggestion is that actually growth was pro poor, which is uh, which actually supports the indices that we have, uh, but that's between really the first, ab about between the first and the ninth uh, quintile. But for the other 1994 and uh, 1997 and 1994 and 2006, we actually find something different, suggesting that actually growth was not poor because you can see that the curve actually uh, rise below the zero line. That's a 1994-1997. And uh, the next curve, uh, figure three, is uh, for 19... Uh, 94 to 2006, it shows the same pattern as 1997, 19, 1994, 1997. So it's like uh, this is consistent with the indices and maybe with the data suggesting that actually growth was pro poor between 1997 and, nine, and 2006, but not uh, for the whole period 1994, 2006, and for the sub-period period 1994, uh, 2000. Uh, 1994 and 1997. Then the next thing we look at are the growth regressions. And here, what we did, as I have shown earlier, we ran a fixed effects uh, regression uh, for the whole period 1994-2006. Now here, the only problem is that, and this is where I talked about the data, is that um, some of the data that we had for the institutions, the only good data we had was for 1997. So when we needed to look at changes between the period, then we could not get tell a good story about the institutional factors. And that's why I'm not talking about them here, because we've talked about uh, the link between institutions and poverty in the paper, but not uh, between growth and inequality and institutions. Instead, what we were able to use, uh, which was comparable across the periods, was actually the area access factors. So it could be process for access to institutional factors, such as access to pipe water. Um, we have a, 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 a access to, OK, we, 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 we have okay, we have the results here. We have the time spent to get to water, which is really a measure of uh, access to institutional uh, institutions that support water supply, uh, piped water, uh, kerosene, uh, which is actually fuel. But the other variable, institutional variables, such as markets, uh, cooperatives, uh, and a number of others that we had, we could not but they are compare across the survey years, and therefore we are not able to, to tell that good story. So then what we find is that growth in mean income is inversely correlated to uh, time spent to fetch water, and use of kerosene. Uh, th th this is what we have marked in red. And also, of course, uh, rural areas uh, experience lower changes in uh, in mean growth rates than urban areas. And then we found that um, access to piped water actually uh, led to increases in uh, mean income or they were, they were associated with, uh, with positive changes in mean income. Uh, 1997, what we, found, uh, what we found is that the growth in mean income declined in 1997 relative to the other survey years. So it would Look like in this particular case, it's only access to uh, piped water, which was actually welfare improving, or which was uh, associated with uh, positive changes in mean income. All the other factors that we are able to uh, compare over that period led to uh, foreign. Uh, mean incomes. Then the other result that we looked at, again, uh, institutions in quotes, uh, the uh, Shapre value decomposition results, where we, we okay, thank you, where, 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 where we, we, we try to explain inequality uh, from the regression-based uh, decomposition. Uh, for the Gini decomposition, we will discuss the results based on the Gini, but they are really uh, similar trends are observed for the coefficient of variation and the generalized entropy measures. Uh, the highest contribution to inequality was from uh, fuel uh, education. Uh, then that was followed by market access. 
uh, access to water, but uh, the least contribution was from security at radius. I'll show the, the table there. So we are talking here about uh, education. For instance, for the Gini, you find uh, that uh, the, 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 the contribution was about uh, 0.045, the relative contribution 0.148. Uh, then the, actually the largest here was fuel, the one that is in purple, uh, followed by water, then uh, market access, and the rest was from security at radius. And as we say, uh, the similar, similar trends were actually observed for the coefficient of variation and the generalized uh, entropy measures for data 0 0.5 and data equal to 2. Uh, the, the, we, we continue with the regression-based decomposition for 1997. Again, very quickly, the largest contribution was from education, followed by uh, access to water and fuel. But here, we find that actually JEDRA contributed the least, because in the other one, it was actually security at radius. Uh, but here, we find that actually JEDRA contributed the least. And then uh, education, availability of water and fuel had the highest marginal contributions, because in the, in the paper, we have both the, 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 the relative contributions and the marginal contributions. So again, that's the table where we've talked about education, availability of water, and fuel. And we find that the results are more or less uh, fairly uh, following the same trends, whether you look at the Gini index, the coefficient of variation, the, or the gen, uh, generalized entropy measures for zero point, uh, uh, data 0 0.5 and 0 point, I mean, at 2. Then uh, finally, we look at uh, the, the, the Shapre value decomposition of changes in inequality by income sources between 1997 and 2006. We, we don't present the, between 1994 and 2006. So so what we find again is for all measures of inequality, again, like we have shown earlier, or like we have for the, for, for, for the general results, uh, the largest sources of changes in inequality were from fuel, water, and education, and the least contributors were security, radius, and uh, JEDA. Uh, the, 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 this, okay, I'll go back there first. Then we find that uh, fuel uh, market access at JEDA were associated with uh, increased inequality. Whereas access to water, education, and radius patterns had an equalizing effect. Uh, what you actually find here is that uh, the ones that have a negative uh, effect has an, have an equalizing effect, but the others actually uh, tend to increase inequality such as uh, fuel. Uh, so finally, what do we conclude from our results here? First, uh, we find that uh, the key sources of inequality in, uh, sorry, I think I've skipped one. First, we look at uh, the resource for, from, for, for poor growth. We find that uh, growth was pro poor between 1997 and 2006. And actually, that's a period over which poverty seems to have declined quite substantially from about 52% to about 46%. Uh, Percent, but uh, we find that that was not the case between 1994 and 1997, or also for the whole period 1994 to 2006. Uh, then the ultra poor benefited less proportionately from the benefits of growth in incomes and poverty reduction, as well as from changes in inequality. Again, between 1997 and 2006. Then we also find that uh, in some instances, growth may have been pro-rich rather than pro-poor. Okay, one thing that I'll mention, but I don't have much time to talk about, is that uh, there, there, has, there have been questions whether really the data was uh, comparable between the three periods. But as I said, we actually, uh, um, we actually adjusted the expenditures by the ratio of the poverty lines. So it would only have to be a question of the actual expenditure data as it were over that time, because at some point, I think there has been questions whether really poverty declined by that large margin or whether it could have been noise in the data. Then we also find that uh, the key sources of inequality were education, availability of water and fuel. Then uh, the growth regression suggests that fuel and access to water and education are the most important correlates of growth.
And then finally, we found that rural areas experienced lower growth in incomes than urban areas. Uh, Policy recommendations, uh, they, 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 uh, these revolve around three issues because it's like the story that is coming up, whether you look at poverty, at growth, inequality, or even changes in growth, changes in inequality. It's a question of accessibility to fuel, uh, water, education, and so forth. So what we, 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 what we recommend in the paper is that perhaps we need to rethink policies uh, that can uh, improve access to the f to fuel, especially for the most poor and vulnerable households. And maybe the, this can be considered through fuel subsidies, such as maybe to uh, the fuels that are mostly used by the poor and not uh, the rich. Because even if you have to subsidize, for instance, uh, uh, liquefied petroleum gas, the poor will not use. But if it is fuel wood, if it is kerosene, then that may have a uh, uh, an impact on the poor. Then water access, uh, we, we propose uh, incentive-based instruments to ensure access to the poor. Uh, we also uh, propose that there should be efficient water management, especially use of water for irrigation, uh, use of water by the rich, uh, which make it actually inaccessible to uh, the, the, the poor. Then we propose that maybe there could be progressive water tariffs in favor of the poor, so that, especially in urban areas where the poor cannot afford water, we, uh, the, the tariffs could be lowered for the poor uh, relative to the rich. Okay, uh, then education, this uh, my last slide actually. Education, uh, we know that Kenya has uh, already subsidized uh, primary education, uh, actually free primary education, subsidized uh, secondary education. Uh, the only problem is that uh, even with that, there are very poor households who may not be able to afford the um, other um, inputs into education, such as uniform and so forth. But uh, most important now, what we need to think about is, for instance, early childhood education development programs and education outside the formal system, because it's like we really think about just about pri pri free primary education, uh, secondary education. Now the government is talking about uh, providing laptops for every child that is going to school. But what about? those who cannot afford the formal system of schooling. Market access enhancing policies, especially for smallholders, uh, holder farmers and business uh, persons. Okay, this maybe comes from a bigger story which is in the paper which I've not talked about. I think I've talked about institutional uh, factors in, 19, in 1997 which you don't have for the other. And then finally, safety and security. Uh, we say that it's important to design core interventions to increase security and reduce chronic crime alongside poverty <coughs> intervention measures. Thank you.